one of the favorite manager ever, Ian Holloway. Hey, I'm just going to say, your favourite Bristol, I'm fis- I lived in Swindon for a bit, so there's a bit of a rivalry, can you feel it? Oh, what's that? Yeah, you had red coat on, yeah? Yeah, Robbins. We used to batter the Bristol Rovers all the time. Eh? When? Back in my When? Day. <laughs> when? <laughs> He's that, not a no, go, no, he? no. <laughs> <laughs> And a couple of Rolexes as well. No, only with uh, Oddo. Oddo did well for him. Oh, he was, that oh. was a good team, wasn't it? Legend, wasn't he? Who was the boy that played with uh, Tottenham and that great player? I always used to talk about him. Hazard. Middle of the pit. Uh, Mickey, Mickey Hazard, yeah. See, he was under terrible pressure, him and him and Jamie O'Hara to try and be the next Oddo. Right. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to be. <sighs> no, that can't no, I won't be the next Oddo, would you? Yeah. God. Oddo was player manager, so was Ian. Aye, it's, 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 it, I, I mean, and you're kind of going through that, you're a player coach, coach almost, uh, but see, is that really hard that going for a player and then, co- was it, so you're coaching the same players as when you were in the changing room as a player? Yeah, they brought me back to do two jobs for the price of one. That's so, why I got the job Bristol Bristol Rovers. They gave me two jobs, manager and player, but pay me one wage. And, and did wait, you have the, any hesitations about that? Did you have, think? Nah, no, my dad was ill at the time and I wanted to try and, I was 33 and I, I, Jerry Francis had taught me so much, I swear to you. All I wanted to do all my life was learn. And he showed me how to get better. You know, most other managers I were with said, oh, you got that wrong. And yeah, but why? Don't he, actually show you how to get he better. He could tell me yeah. why. You know, in other words, if I'm trying to mark my man and he's running in the box, if I quarter turn my shoulders, I can't see him. He would say, Ollie, you just got to, don't show me your number. Just So all of a sudden, he would correct all of us. And, oh, yeah. mate. So anything he said, I would write down when I got home. If I didn't already know it, I'd write it down and make sure I read about it. And then I'd try and help my team out. It was all about us being in the right place to work well as a unit. Yeah. And What age did you start doing that, Ian? Writing stuff you're saying all that, I know, yeah. Um, when I was 25. What, that young you started writing Yeah, because then, yeah. I met Jerry. Yeah. And Jerry was... I mean, Nigel Martin went, come from Cornwall on trial, right? He goes in the... The goalkeeper? Yeah, yeah, goes in Bristol Rovers team. Then he gets sold to Crystal Palace. But Jerry was teaching him how to do it, how far he should be away from his near post. He goes off with the England people and he gets coached by their top goalie coaches. And Jerry went, it's your, that's wrong. Don't, Don't you're too close. Yeah, so he knew more than them. Do you know what I mean? The bloke was unreal. Absolutely. And want to win. Talk about want to win. The bloke was embarrassing how much he wanted to win. Yeah. And I had him and Kenny Ibbett there, and I was a midfield player. And we had a practice because we didn't have enough players. They would 36 and they would still play against us. So me and Andy Reese, who was a tire fitter, <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Ibbett saw him play and he walking his dog on a Sunday, invites him down for a trial. He gets in the team. We sign him on. Uh. So he's like, one minute he's fitting tires, next minute he's playing next to me. And we had to try and get the ball off of them two. Can you imagine? It was un- unreal. How could you An not education, learn? that, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely. But see, see, when you're player manager, was it was it tough to get that the right relationship with <coughs> players? Or do you need to distance yourself? Could you not be one of the boys in the dressing room? That's the hardest thing. I, I was always, if my team were losing, then I was the one who made people believe we're going to get there. Because I, I didn't care what the score was. I didn't care what the time. I believed we could do it. So... I lost that part. Every time I walked in a room, it was different. I wasn't one of them. And I yeah. didn't realise they would take me like that. And the minute you leave someone out, I'm sorry, the minute you leave someone out, no matter how positive you are to him, he hates you. He f- yeah. flipping hates you. Do you know what I mean? So you got to try and get back. And, and I hated that part of it, right? As being a manager. If I could have been a coach, I would have loved it. But I had no choice. I went straight in. So you either pop back up in, in the frying fat or you don't. So yeah. I had to do it. No problem. Not going to say anything about you in the frying fat. No, keep that for an hour show. Yeah. What's Is that for the Mars bar? You, no, what, what's that, that like? Oh, they, we don't, people don't eat that, didn't they? No, Deep fried Mars bar. Is that there? What? 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 Putting his face in the frying fat. That's the job. That's the job. That's the job. That's the job. You must like him. You must really like him. I had to drop one on him by now. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's See, that. this is this is not even on the sheet. This is just one to give him a hug. Aye, what a hug! I think he's a good hugger. He's a type like no, but he, you're just but listen. I've only met you and, and listened to you and stuff like that. But you, he's a type I would love to play under. Yeah, and I'm just about to say that about is your style of management. Do you think? And sometimes it's not, maybe no Simon about is it more important to be more a man manager or a coach like you, you, tactics and stuff. I know there's a, a balance, but I always felt that you got the best out of me. Like when, on the personal level. On the so personal level, the personal and, and, level. And you would want to run through a brick wall for them, or do you know what I mean? Yeah. I always felt you got me out of 
these days, right now, you, you got to have both. Yeah. Or you got if you haven't got the tactical now, you won't never make it. Now. No. It's all tactical. Like, now, the the, the yeah. game has changed so much. You know, the, 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 I, I call it a, the Guardiola effect because when you lose it, there's the, the game is completely all together in one. There's four elements of it. You got the ball, right? You lose it, so your transition. Yeah. Then you defend. Then your defensive transition into That's attack. Right. So. Without that, you can't do it. But I totally agree with you. I had to believe in the bloke and I had to believe that the bloke cared about me. Otherwise, and I'd give him everything then. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a balance now where you you have to be able to do that. I think Klopp probably shows it the most yeah. because his emotion with his players on the pitch. Guardiola does it in private as well, too, or looks like he does it as well. So, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to have all of it to if you're going to survive because mm. people from... God knows where to take your job these days, don't they? Yeah. How what? did the, sorry, the the QPR move come about? Because it was midway through the season, is that right? Um, yeah, it was. I lost my job at Bristol Rovers. They were trying to get Jerry Francis back. Jerry wanted to retire. From Jerry, QPR. your mentor, they were trying yeah, to get yeah, him back? Yeah, 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 yeah. He'd been the QPR, was really good, but they did were he, talking to him. Did he tell you that? He did, yeah. So anyway, he helped me get the QPR job, but they were going into financial ruin. Um, I had to have three interviews because Chris Wright didn't really fancy me, but Jerry kept saying, he's your man, I'm telling you. So anyway, I, I managed to get it. We were, went into administration after we got relegated and I had seven players left on the books and I wasn't allowed to, allowed to sign anybody else unless I could prove to the administrator. So, I mean, mate, it took me three years to put them back where they are on after budget. 5.6 million, they got relegated. I put them back up there on 2.8. So people don't realise that, you know, yeah. the, the, the severity of what can happen. But I, Bristol Rovers was my team and then QPR because of Jerry Francis and how, how he turned my life around. He loved Qu Queen's Park Rangers so much. He helped me get the job, mate. That They're in my blood. They always will be. So, you know, we went to the wall. We were two minutes away from them never existing again. Wow. And my lads who we put together on nothing managed to help us, you know? Yeah. See, just on the interviews, I'm upset. I'd love to know about this. How how hard are interviews with chairman? Like first, Do you need to proper go and sell yourself? No, nah, they're the difficult. You, you never know what they're looking for, but, you know, you, you have to... For me, I, I like people to know where they stand with me, so... I really take over them interviews and say, what are you looking for? What do you want? I'd look at the club and if I, there's things there I don't like, I'd ask why and listen to their explanation. What, what are you in it for? Because I don't really trust any of them. They yeah. might be really good businessmen, but they might not be good at running a football team mm -hmm. and they might step on your toes. Because if, if I'm being judged on what I do, let me do it. Don't interfere with me. I can't have that, you know? Yeah. So. If we're going to agree to do something, me, you, you, here we go, right? I won't ever change. I'm going to do that. Have you, you ever been in an interview with the chairman thought he knew more than you? All of them, yeah. Did I? Uh, yeah, yeah, I all of them. Just straight in that. Yeah. No, all of them. They've all got their own way. They're very successful businessmen. You know, the, the, the secret to everything is to try and have your own identity and put that onto your team and let your team do it for you because it ain't, for you. it's not about you. It's about how you help them become a unit, yeah. right? And Blackpool was, was, for me, was, I tried to change everything. I wanted to give them an attacking formation because my best mate who'd worked with me for ages said, you're scared to lose. You're coaching. You're, you're, you're so demoralizing for our attacking wingers you're telling them to defend all the time because you're scared of losing now why don't you just go and see what the best teams are doing and come up with a, an attacking plan and this is what he said so I took a year to not do anything I did a bit of luckily a bit of work on the, on the radio and that and, but I went around watching how Spain play and tried to get my own way of doing it so Swansea on another team that you watched? Yeah, I watched Swansea there. five times and, you know, because Roberto Martinez was there and the way they played was... So I came up with a plan. Everywhere the ball was, I wanted to be able to tell my team where I wanted them and why. And then I come up with some just general, not coaching points, because that's not right. Sometimes tactics have to change, but if we can't get in that side, I want you to switch it. Yeah. Right? 
and I want you to do a long switch, not a square switch, a long one. So I stuck to it and I believed in it. And then I went there and I'm not taking anything as an excuse. We're just going to do this. But Blackpool, luckily I got a job because I liked their group and their team. When they gave me it, I looked at Charlie. I thought, I've got to have him. I looked at DJ Campbell. I've got to have him because they borrowed him on loan that year before and they were excellent. And the group themselves were very good at defending. Yeah. So I wanted them to, okay, lads, what we're going to do now is think about attacking and we'll defend a bit higher up because you can do all of that. But they were happy that they finished 16th. Hmm. I went, well, I know good. Why can't we play a Premier League way and get there? Someone's got to go up. Why can't it be us? So all of a sudden, I, and it was a mantra, I just kept saying it. And in the end, they started to believe it. Yeah. You know? But right. listen, I had some wonderful people. And I, and I call it, we'd all been somewhere and failed. Right? So we were like the misfits all back together. Charlie Adam was failing at Glasgow Rangers. Hopeless. Yeah. Stephen Craney had gone to Hopeless. Leeds yeah, Hopeless and there. failed, right? So I had been to Leicester and failed, right? I left Plymouth when we were doing well and I went to Leicester and I failed. So this was a whole, hang on, we're in the shit together. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. where you need, that's what we're going back. Tactics are fine, but you need somebody in the man management. But one of your biggest rivals in the podcast game, Peter Crouch. Crouch. Did you have him as a young lad? He saved QPR. What, in terms of getting us financially? Yeah. Financially, he saved QPR because uh, Harry was at Portsmouth and they want, he wanted to buy him. There was another club in for him as well. And uh, we had to sell, right? So they all knew that. And I went, no, we're, we're not selling to you without a seller. Right? So we got, I think it was four million, which helped the club at the time. But the sell-on, Harry went, oh, I'm not paying you that, right? I said, the other club's going to do it, so he's going there. We had to get it, right? And that made us another five million later on down the line, right? So it's about bluff because yeah. we had to sell him. And Crouchy went back to Harry and said, look, if you want me, I want QPR to survive. So you've got to pay that. Brilliant. Is that true that Abby liked you before Crouchy? Nah. nah, not in a million years. What would a face like this? <laughs> She's <laughs> sensible. <laughs> Did you know he was going to have, you know, have a career he had when you first seen him? Absolutely, yeah. What a player, what a touch. Good feet, isn't it? Huh? Oh my God. I mean, it, it was like, he just looked ungainly because he was still growing into his body. He probably is because he's still skinny now, isn't he? But his touch and everything about him was absolutely first Was he, was he a bit crazy as, like, as a character? Was he a funny boy? Huh? No, no. He was a lot quieter than he is now, then, because he was very young, but... Um, it's an act, isn't it? It's... He's it on I, I, I can't describe it. He, you want to be around him. Just a like you know I mean? guy, yeah, yeah, he was absolutely part of everything, do you know what I mean? But And that's also a problem, because you're looking for him all the time. So instead of passing it when you should do, you're hitting it towards him. So I kept saying, QPR fans don't want that. They don't want a big man up front. They like Stanley Bowles. They like Jerry France. They like all the, all the tricksters. So just pass it. Yeah. But with him in your team, because he was a lot better than that. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. got him coming short and getting hold of it and turning rather than just yeah. pulling on the last man all the time. So, you know, but going back to it, QPR, they love a fancy damn player. So I had to play with some sort of style. And if you talk to some of their fans, they would prefer I took me Blackpool format back and to them down, yeah. but I didn't know that then yeah. do you get what I mean it was all yeah. a bit weird see Crouchy sorry is, is, is it truth over the big feet big socks is that well it's right. I'm, I'm saying if he's a size 13 with a thin sock He's not in proportion. No, that ain't true. No. <laughs> <laughs> if well, that's the case, Les Ferdinand must have a size 17. 17. <laughs> we used to call him the tripod, mate. He Can was sponsored. Again? Uh, the one. <laughs> Cash in. Cash in. Not the maggot. It could be worse. <laughs> I'll oh, be I'm happy with it. a worm, son. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the QPR, you were constantly like, Les, I never went there. Ended up going to Plymouth Argyle. Why did the Leicester move no come about at that time? Um, it was lots of trials and tribulations with that club at that time. And uh, Milan Mandrich, who's still a good friend of mine, um, lovely man, he he liked chopping and changing managers, you know. So I didn't get it and I didn't get that and I didn't and I went to Plymouth because um I was on gardening leave. And that means you're still getting paid until you get another job. But they put me on gardening leave and 
I'm shit in the garden. <laughs> I'm absolutely useless. So, uh, yeah, it, I went there. I should have never left, to be honest. It was... Uh, should you have not left, no? Not Plymouth, no. Because the team I had there, the lads were really listening and what have you, but I fell out. There was one bloke on the board who, who wasn't at my interview. And I just... He was doing my edit. How what, <coughs> was he doing? what was he doing? Well, I, I, I said to myself... If I don't get on well with all of them, they don't let me run it, then I ain't going to be doing it. So I met, there were six of them on the board. Five of them interviewed me. This bloke was on holiday. <coughs> so they gave me the job. He comes back. I hated him instantly because, honestly, he was just a bullshitting bullshitter. <laughs> and I just thought, he, and he, he had some of the lads who were friends with him and used to invite him around to, oh, yeah, the lads won't like that. The lads won't who the fuck are you? Who are you? Uh, do you know what I mean? I nearly swore then. Who are you? What on earth are you telling me what to do? Who are you? Where were you in my interview? I want to work with you. Right? And who are you influencing here? This is just bullshit. Do you know what I mean? Don't tell me what the lads are going to like and what they ain't going to like. Oof, who the fuck is man, that You know what I mean? Too. So anyway, <coughs> <coughs> anyway, um, Norwich were sniffing around managers at the time. I did an interview saying, no, no way am I going. Right? Norwich aren't interested, but then Leicester came back in. So the Plymouth fans absolutely hate me because I left them. Yeah. I need to ask you on Plymouth, I spoke to, sorry, just quickly, Hasnell Joffrey says, ask Ian Holloway about police horses. Yeah, I spoke about, we, we went, <laughs> I use different things to try and get your mind to think the way I might think, you know? And so for me, a police horse, my daughters love horses, right? Police horses, fight or flight. Right? In a horse. You know that, fight or flight. Right? That, fight that. or flight, right? So they have to train them to listen to all those noises and not do nothing and just stand there, right? That ain't a natural reaction, right? So I said, we're going to Sunderland. You're going to, there are all these people, all there, they'll all be calling us this, that, and I want you like a police horse. Police horse mentality where all that comes and you just focus on what the hell we're doing, right? And I believe we could beat them. So we had a flight up there. First time we'd ever did it. We invited some fans to do it. We won the game and we had the best flight in the world on the way back. And the lads kept saying about a police horse. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So no, the luck cracker was the one with the sucking the thumb, man. The, the, the tits. Oh, the, the, the barrel tits. That was, was that his dad's story. Yeah, no, that was my dad's story. I, that was a cracker. About being unlucky. I hate people who think they're unlucky, right? Cause, I agree. Yeah, no, I, I can't stand it. it. Yeah, that, that ain't the mentality I want. I said, you know, to be fair, you're never going to be as unlucky as I am anyway, because if I fell into a barrel full of tits, I'd come out <laughs> sucking my thumb. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but how bad would that be? You know what I mean? We are designed to... That's our food, isn't it? Yeah, I, had, yeah. I had a wee, a wee story. Did you sign a, a player based on I'm fighting to get caught in CCTV? <coughs> is, this, is this true? If I, I got my statue? Sure right? so no, no. The actual story was we, we had him on loan, yeah? Marcel Seep, centre half, right from... Uh, Holland. Hungary. It was it Hungary? No, 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 Holland. He's Dutch. Right. Dutch. So, Come on, anyway, my resources told me that he uh, paid for Heronveen, the, the biggest club over there, and uh, he had some trouble with him because his behaviour wasn't right, right? So, turns out, he was a doorman, right? Liked a beer, <laughs> and on his part, he was a doorman part-time because he liked to fight. So, anyway, cut a long story short, We've signed him on loan. Um, I get a, one of them horrible phone calls on a Monday morning. Uh, two of your lads were arrested, uh, blah, blah, blah. Here's the CCTV footage. The cops need to come and see you. So I got the chairman on the phone to me saying, what should we do? What should we do? I said, I don't know yet. I want, I want them not to go out and do all that, but I don't know yet until I've seen the footage. So the cops came in, showed me the footage. So my centre forward comes out. He's being attacked. The bouncers sort of come over and Marcel see, steps in the way, pushes him out of the way and says, right. So he's then saying, right, hang on, sort this out. So there's two or three other lads there. Bear in mind, a couple of them are dormant. So that it all kicks off. The centre forward don't help him at all. He his and he, he knocks out the three of them. Yes. So he gets arrested. He didn't start it, right? Stop so I'm then. saying, the chairman says to me, what do you think? And I went, look, I think we should sign him because <laughs> team plan. He didn't start it. He's protecting the centre forward. I'm going to have a go at the centre forward for not coming back in. Even if you're shit, you should have come back and <laughs> helped him. 
And really, he's knocked out three of them. <laughs> so do you want your centre halves to knock people out or hug them? He went, yeah, I get your point. In the end, he's his, daughter, show, he? he's his daughter married him. <laughs> but the chairman's daughter married the again. The chairman's <laughs> daughter married Marcel C. So not only did I sign him, but... Well done to it was meant to be. Were you, were you worried about giving him a were you worried about criticising him in case he battered you? No, not at all. No. Not did at all. Whisper, did you whisper to him? No. Not. No, I said I was fuming at Sylvain Ebanks Blee. Oh, was it Sylvain Ebanks Blee? Yeah, because he should have gone in and half helped him or even looked like he just was kid, up. Just kid, yeah, yeah, yeah bro, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do that bit where you're just getting held back, you know? <laughs> but not in a freaking stand off a camera. Right. Well, what's your stance on players like you? Do you hate it? Plays what? Your stance on players' nights that a lot of managers do not like it. Mate, you should be you should be focusing on what's more important. But listen, sometimes you need a release from what you're doing if you're taking yourself too seriously. This is my advice to anybody. I have got through on life by understanding I might be a bit of a clown, I might be a bit of this, I might, but, and I really care, and you can't stop me if I care as much as I do. So we're out a laugh every now and again. What's the point of living yeah. Let's face it, what over the last two, two years, we've been bored out of our minds, haven't we? What have, you been, doing? What have you been getting up to? Oh, good Working God. Working on his body, yeah. I've been... Uh, been, I've been and no, and no, I can't. I, I was, no, I was in the gym and I got... <laughs> <laughs> got <laughs> 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 Don't just talk to me about tits. Right? Just been setting me I've had enough tits in yeah. my life, right? And I've been like one for too long. But see, on Christmas do's and stuff, I always wonder, do managers just sit and worry for the full weekend? Yeah, it's it's an absolute nightmare. What you want them to do is take responsibility and also be aware that they might not like you. Yeah. Right? The Bristol Rovers, right? We had a great crew and, and we used to go fancy dressed, right? Because we realised that we'd be better off. you cause more of a, a, a laugh than rather than like just turning up in your best gear. And our gear was shit anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, I mean, not, not being funny. No, yeah. no, not, not being funny, but not even he that. made us look shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> even that. Even the old cricket. Do you want <laughs> the old cricket. Do you want to swap? Do you want to swap for this? This all you will last. No, 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 not no, at all. No, no, I can't do that. I can't do the low collar. I no, can't. I don't like that. No. I can't. No, no, I, look, I just look weird. Has there Don, been other Don occasions? Don Johnson I, I with a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only bloke I know who can wear a jacket and a little. You know what I mean? Yeah. It don't work, does it? But you, no, yours works. Off, it? Yeah, you pulled it off. Thanks, yeah. man. So, see, is there any other instances of players that got themselves into bother? In your teams? Hundreds of them, yeah. Is there any you'd like to share? <laughs> um, any of funny side that now? The funny side, I mean, it depends how you see that. If, if someone's got a drink problem and, and, oh, no, and uh, you, you chase them down the road and he smashes his car, it's in the middle of the day. Oof, you chuck them in your car and then you get their car moved back. You know, all of these, you won't believe what it's like to be a manager sometimes. You know, you really... You, you really wouldn't, yeah. honestly. You know, you've got to be a psychologist. But the most important thing is that you have a duty of care to your players to make sure they understand the importance of what they're doing, yeah. right? Be, and the importance comes from, for me, it comes from who are you representing? Not just your own family. You are playing for every single person who's ever worn that tattoo on their arm or that paid to go and watch a match. That's what you've got to remember. Mm. You are a privileged Son of a bitch wow, to wear that shirt. Do you understand? Yeah. And as long as my players do that, I realise they need a bit of time out to, you know, as long as they haven't caused any of the trouble. Troubles will sometimes find you. Yeah. 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 It will. You know, and if I'm on a pre-season tour, that's when I don't like it. They expect to go drinking when I take them over to Portugal to run their nuts. To work. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So they, oh, at the end of the week, uh, can we? That's all uh, shout, isn't it? Not for him, really. Yeah. Right. Would you ever have a drink with players? Have you ever been at Yeah. Have you? Yeah. yeah. What, uh, what club did that have happened most? Um, QPR. We were up against it so badly that I felt we deserved a, a do. And we had more than a wee one, yeah. yeah. But I, I just said that we'll leave you because they wanted all my staff there. Yeah. You know, we'll leave you at a certain time and make sure you don't but you're a dancer, aren't you? So oh, you're I love a dance, yeah, yeah. But in my time, I mean, I'm 58, right? Yeah. I, don't, I might not look it. I look about 150. Could, you, could we see but, it a wee bit? <laughs> no, 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 not a minute. No, you can see it online. I can. Uh, Are you good? Are you good? No, Yannick Balassi did it, didn't he? Oh, he, he, he took. Did I could kill him. 
No, no, he, he took me, a, yeah, after the Brighton game. So did you know what that gun up? No, not really. That was private for us. Because I, I kept on about, oh. I can outdance some of you lads. I mean, Wilf can move, but not, not you know. Uh, he didn't have the flares like I had and the big shoes that I had, you know. But I never drank, mate. So if I ever went out, I would be the first on dance floor because I love music anyway, you know, honestly. Well, yeah, oh, no. So listen. Scooter? No, I don't. The Northern Soul, you just float, do you? Float a bit, it's huh? not really, not really my mood. Not scooter, no. Not so home. I'm into a bit of jazz funk, a bit of soul. I'm, well, you still be honestly, good enough, yeah. yeah. My favourite song ever is um, D Train, right? Huh? I stand yeah. up on a cloud and shout out loud, "You're the one for me." You're the one for me. You know the big dude. <laughs> yeah, and you probably don't know it, but then then I'm going into George Benson. I'm going. Just give me the I'm, night. Oh, Is that George oh, Benson? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vision. Oh, you. And then fine, really, yeah. Stevie Wonder's the oh, he's a king. old time up there, off the planet, genius, Got right? Because if I couldn't see, I'd be sat home moaning my ass off. Yeah. Not only that, he's just been. It's a lot of life as well, isn't it? Oh, a great what? personality, yeah. I just love it. One of the best things I've heard in a long, long time is when Ian offered the away fans going to Sunderland, 700 in my pint. Unbelievable gesture, that, mate. And did they take it up? No. Um, I was going to open up the clubhouse and do that, yeah, but one of them, I did buy them a drink, the ones who went, and um, one of them sent me a fiver back a few years ago and said, thanks ever so much, boom. No, it's amazing. You don't realise, I don't think people realise they're never given enough credit of what that does to you as a as a manager and as a team. How the lift it can give you when you know they've travelled that far yeah. on a Tuesday night to, you know, we understand what it takes. So you know, uh, and as a human being, all I ever wanted to do was try and make those people proud of how I played for them. Yeah, and you can't always make everybody happy, can you? But What's the point? It ain't about me. It's about being part of a team, you yeah. know? Have you ever had any f uh, funny run-ins with fans? Too many to... to, to I, 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 the, the best one ever for me was I was playing at Bristol Rovers and my best mate, Gary Premrise, had just started scoring some, some goals and he was getting talked about. There was rumours that Watford were going to come in for him or Aston Villa were going to come in. And So anyway, we're, we're away at Oldham and uh, he said he was injured. He, Oh, a bit of an injury. So we, we go out on the pitch and he looks at the pitch and it was brilliant. And he went, oh, quite fancy this. Yeah. So one of these lads went, hey, are you, are you, are you Penrise? <laughs> you little shit, are you Penrise? He went, yeah, yeah, I am. He went, yeah, yeah, talking about you, you're a midget, lad. <laughs> and he went, you fucking what? And he walked over and he went, you must be a midget gem. They want 500 grand for you and fucking hell, I can't wait to see you play. Like, so it's turned from a, a fight from a... And at the end of the game, Penny scored two. As we're coming off, the bloke went, you're fucking worth it, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you don't expect that, do you? Yeah. And the other one was Port Vale away. I mean, Jesus Christ, we're in, we're in the second leg because that was the, the final was two-legged, right? Bristol Rovers versus Port Vale. Robbie Earl, Edder in the last minute. Oh, I'll play Robbie Earl, I'm good. And um, we're devastated turning back to walk, back to the, there was about half a minute left, two minutes left on, on the time. They're all celebrating. And one of them blue invalid cars just steams up because people are running on the pitch. Yeah. You could tell the bloke in the car thought, you're going to get this abandoned, right? And he's hitting people over. <laughs> Mate. So I'm walking back, Penny's with me and he's going, Ollie, look at that, look at that there. Oh, look at that. And I'm looking at it and I'm, it's poof, one person's up in the air. Boom. He's hit about four of them, right? Because he was <laughs> on the pants. Oh, there, yeah, as they're trying to run on and celebrate because he didn't want the game cancelled. That so, meant uh, they were promoted. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And after it, right, Jerry Francis is in control. I want you all to cry because, you know, we'll remember these, take this with you. But on the way back, we, we were laughing and Jerry went, what? Can laughing at, and when we explained it to him, he, he got it's it as well. But oh, mate, you, you never know what what it means to people, do you? Yeah. It, for me, <laughs> well, that's unreal. Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't believe how, how far they hit them up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> you see, leaving Perth was that the biggest mistake of your life? Yeah, looking back, yeah, I didn't realise it at the time. Um, without a shadow of doubt, that, that, that those fans and that group of players, 
I should have never left. Whether I was having a row above it. You know, what people don't understand, the management above, right below is the players and the, the and the fans and the supporters and the PR of the club above is the board of directors, right? I was having I didn't deal with them how I should have done. And I shouldn't have got angry and I shouldn't have left. Yeah. But my it's a wife's place to play in at home park. Oh, magnificent! My wife's mum was dying at that time, and my wife was away from me most of the time, trying to get her through this cancer. And unfortunately, it got her. Right? She was told three times that she's over it, but it came back. So it's not an excuse. It was part of what I was trying to deal with then. Yeah, what you're loving her. And I think a lot of the anger I had over that not being able to do is being totally useless spilled over on these little spats I was having with the board. Yeah. Right? And the biggest one for me was they kept talking about their old manager all the time. Paul Sturrock. I spoke to Paul. Oh, yeah, so the chairman them, yeah. was talking to Paul all the time on the phone and I went, well, I'm not Paul Sturrock. Why are you talking to Paul? Why, why does it matter what Paul thinks? I said, you know what? Why don't you just get him back? And I'm tough. You know, I lost my, lost my cool. And he did, he did come back, he didn't did he? He did come yeah, back, yeah, yeah. That was when he had the cowboy hat on. Yeah, he had the cowboy couple, hat and he had everything on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mate, it is what it is, but those players, you know, the Lillian Nallises, the Paul Wottons, the... the, the Hasnel Joffreys. Hasnel Joffreys. I'm telling you, at that time, they were buzzing. Yeah. And I was buzzing with them. But I'm going to say this, you end up thinking it's you. That's the problem with football. And it wasn't. It's about your people. So and sorry, you ended up thinking it's you as in you, you thought it was why they were successful I, I th- it was because yeah, you. Yeah, I thought I could do this everywhere yeah. I go. You end up, honestly, the game gets you like that in your head and I'll, I'll admit it now, I thought I could do that anywhere. I went to Leicester, fell flat on my face, man. Because it ain't about that. It's about being authentic and being there for them and letting them grow and grow with you. But the, the, the main reason, when you turn down 1.5 million for your right winger, and you promise him you're going to get him a better deal because now he's worth that money. You're going to get a better weight. And they say no because the other players won't like it. Where was this at Leicester? No, this was at Plymouth. Plymouth, right. Yeah. He was the right winger. Um, he ended up leaving and going to Stoke. Can I think? Mm. No. So, see, see so did you then? I can't remember. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. David Norris. Oh, David Norris, right? Yeah. Right, the Portsmouth I, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. going to double his money, right? Because yeah. we could afford it. And I said, look, if we keep going, you you want to stay up. You don't want to get promoted, but I believe he's good enough. You know, Tony Pulis, I want to buy him ever. And he's worth that amount of money. We've turned down that amount of money, right? Pay him that. Yeah. And then you'll be paying the going rate for the championship because he's now worth that, you know? And I said, what I'll say to the other lads is when I get 1.5 million offer for you, you get the same. I'll pay you the same as him. Yeah. Now get out of my office. <laughs> you goddamn turkey. Not <laughs> if, they're, if they're moaning about it, you know? And so I let him down. Yeah. Because I said I was going to get him a better deal. Well, for me, it was for a club. Yeah. And they didn't agree with me. So how could I stay after that? And then... How could I stay after that? You can't stay. You're a man of principle, aren't you? No, so what, if I promise you I'm going to get, now we've turned down that 1.5 million, I'm going to get you a better deal and I can't do it. What are you going to think of me then? I think you're a turkey. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. a turkey. <laughs> don't, then, t- don't tell me it's Christmas. <laughs> and then you went to uh, Leicester. Oh, God, yeah. But see, what, did you realise at the time they were in a mess behind the scenes as no. much as they were? No, no, not at all. So Part of me thought, right, I'm going to actually now have a fence off with one of the biggest characters in the game in... Uh, Milan Mandrich, and I thought I'm going to show him that I'm brave enough and do it. I can do anything. I actually thought, you know, I could walk on water, but <laughs> don't you ever. That's what football does. Life does it to you sometimes. Pulls you down under, shut your face. Yeah. And you got to look at yourself and get over it, haven't you? And what, is he such a big personality? He was massive, yeah. Wonderful bloke, right? But would try and dominate who you had on the training. We had 72 players. <laughs> no way. 72 players. What, in the I first started team? my first meeting. I started a meeting. Yeah, we had seventy-two pros. I started my meeting, and they all went, "Hang on, uh, all the injured are coming in now." And Twenty-seven of them came in. I've never seen so many people and staff in my life, but such is life. How did you do a training session with seventy-two players? That's my whole point. What the? F- it was scary, honestly. Scary. What did you, what did you actually do? Oh, well, I had a goalie <laughs> come in and say to me, "Look, he wants me to go on loan. I'm going to stay here. He's given me a three years deal, and I'm going to take every penny." 
because that contract's the best one I've ever had and I'm not, you know, so I'm not going to cause you any trouble. Please don't ask me to go out on loan because I'm not going out. And he trained like a, he trained like yeah, a trooper, is. but, you know, the, the mistakes were made, you know? Yeah. So young players come out to say it. Have you ever had any players come out to you and they just talk a load of rubbish? No, they, they, they don't think they're talking rubbish, but really what I try and do is argue with them and say, hang on, does that sound right? Come and sit. I've had one of them sit on my chair and say, right. I'm, and I, I only, so you've been home? Yeah, yeah. I've actually gone round there and said, right, sit there. Right, and I'm going to say what you just said and see how you fucking like it. I was just answering that. If you if you sort of drop a player, would would you expect them to come and see you? Yeah, I always try and explain it. Do you? Yeah. Always before you drop them or before no, you drop them, I, explain before it Before the team, I try and... I, I try and get the team out there so they're sorted. Uh, ain't about you, it's about us. This is what I feel. And if you want to know why, I'll tell you after the game if I can, if I haven't got time to tell you. But I will try and tell you before you know what the team is. So that would be on a Thursday. So sometimes I might try something on a Tuesday. And then, oh, am I playing? I don't care about you, mate. It's about the team, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So if I didn't get through it, and you want to come and see me, I'll tell you exactly how it is. If you don't want to hear it, don't come in. But I will tell you what I think. And if you can't take it, that's your point. Yeah. If you want to argue with me, so what? At least I've told you what I think. So see back with Big Mandich, were you telling him that there were certain players that you wanted to leave? Yeah. And, and he was just refusing to get rid of them? No, he quite liked them, so he didn't want to get rid of them. But he's not a manager. How does no, that but that's life. But all I'm saying, when we went down, the, the Leicester fans were there no matter what. You know, talk about... Brilliant football club, right? They were there. There was 25,000 of them going up to 33, even when we we're going to get relegated from that division. They were magnificent, right? They deserved better than that. So I said, you got to get rid of him and him. I'm not telling you those names because that's not right. Oh, no. I said... Half camera. No. No, because you <laughs> might repeat it. I don't know you well enough yet. <laughs> right, I'm saying it's him and it's him. And I know you like them too. I said, they will cost us that to pay up to go because I don't want them in another day I don't think they're helping the group at all right so they'll cost you that <coughs> um, and I can save you money if you don't agree with me then you get rid of me there because I ain't working for you if you don't do what I'm saying and he ultimately chose the players yeah got rid of me then. so how are you still pals on doesn't matter because I told him what I felt he did what he felt which is an owner's pro prerogative yeah. the, the skill of it all is trying to get the owner to believe in what you're saying and get him to spend a lot more than he wanted to but be successful in your choices do you get what I mean yeah. because then the club be moving if you, if you look at Man United right now if you look at the age of the people that they've brought in Cavani Ronaldo Ronaldo and God knows what Ronaldo's is slightly different but if you look at the age of that then are they going to have a sell on value they might bring you some shirts in and help you but Really, they're not. Mm -hmm. So they've got to be successful. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. To uh, Varane, they've got to be successful. So really, they are supporting the manager. Well done to Oli to get them to do that because yeah. that's the skill. So you see, after that, obviously, you've had your problems with your people above <coughs> you at Plymouth and you have problems with people above you at Leicester. Was there ever a, thought, a time that you thought, oh, I can't be bothered with this? That's like asking me that I can't be bothered to breathe. You know, it, it's been in me so long and... Yeah. You know, listen, I, I've been doing it for 40 years, like as a player and then a manager. I haven't had hardly any breaks at all. But it is me. It is who I am. It is where I am. And sometimes without it, I'm not sure who the, who, who yeah. I really am, you yeah. know? And that, that's the worrying thing. That's the scary thing, you know? And one of my mates, I could call him a mate because we've spoke about him already, Ray Wilkins, you know, he needed some help because he was hitting the, 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 the drink and... Who would have thought that someone like him would have needed that? He yeah. got lost. He didn't know who he was. Without football. Without it? football. Without being... Do you know what I mean? And, and the reputation that he had and the di discipline that he had, the self, how fit he was up until, you know, 36, 37, still playing, still running. Amazing. And, and really, the game let him down because there should be some red flags and somewhere to go to help people who yeah. are relying on other mm -hmm. props to, you know. And at the end of the day, it's... It's a, a very, very sad thing that we have a duty as football people to make sure that no one's bullied, 
banter is banter and it ain't, don't go over the top. And you have to make sure that we are mentally right. There's two ways to be fit in there, physically fit and mentally fit. And we don't even touch the surface on the mental, the mental side of things, particularly how the game is now and the, the social media is now. We need to do something. And the companies who take everybody's money should be making sure they stop this. But football should look out for its loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. See, Ian, after the, the, the list of the Jute, you then took a year out. Yeah. That I got, was when you went and watched uh, Swansea in the Spain. Was that, was that right? Yeah. Was that then? Yeah, that was all then. I, so was that, did you, that, was that your first almost for you, your career? I needed a break, a break. But, but I'd fallen out with Gary Penrose, who, who was... What, your best part, did you? Yeah, yeah. We had a massive argument because he wanted me to stay and he believed we could still do it and don't don't fall out with Milan. We can, you know, I'll get you the better players on the training ground. Don't fall out with him. I did. C- couldn't help it. I couldn't have someone as big as that and influence like that hurting his life by telling him who should come on our training ground. Right? Because he was my chief scout. Penny would moved right. up to be my chief scout. So in those three or four months that we got relegated, he, he must have kept God knows how many players off my training ground, even extra ones that Milan was being told by an agent is brilliant. He said, Ollie, he's crap. Mm. Can't let you on. He ain't a good one. He's a wrong one. So, you know, so anyway, we fell out and he said to me quite brutally on it, I'm fed up of working with you, right? You artistic, all your flair's gone. You're just scared to lose. Oh, was what? that him that said that yeah, to you? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So we took the gloves off and I went, all right, yeah. So luckily for me, BBC offered me some work to go and watch some games. So I watched Man United three or four times uh, on BBC Radio. Then Talk Sport came in and gave me some work as well. So I managed to to have a reason to go. And then I had a little break and went to Spain for a week where the Spanish team had already just won the World Cup and they were going around their country playing games to thank the supporters so I watched them train it was all open it was absolutely marvellous I went to uh, Real Madrid looked at their training ground got taken by a little bloke called Paco was magnificent and it took you then that's right yeah (laughs) and in the end he just said uh, all you need because I saw it all he went all you need uh, one ball and bloody good players <laughs> <laughs> see on that see when you get a job can we come and watch you train of course oh, you can we'd love, we'd oh, love, love that, that. Yeah. we love that you get me a job and I'll find me a team and I'll train them tomorrow well, well, well it's basically yeah. a Scottish pod, pod, would you take a Scottish job all day long I'm free part Scottish there you go you can come and live with him stay in him yeah. Scottish my man's sister my man dad's sister so you need to share with him as well. Yeah. Yeah, but flat. Could share the man's bed, couldn't you? <laughs> you could jump in. <laughs> Would you do that? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no. Share your mum's bed. No. I know for me or for my man. <laughs> oh, imagine having the Scottish game. Scottish game is so oh, yeah, a team it it full of personalities. Because no, but it would. It really, really would. Because we're just about to see what. Yeah, I'm not joking. I'm three parts Scottish. You know that. Three of my. I don't know. We are. Grandparent was, but they were Scottish. So a grand, a grand, uh, and a yeah, a and Malcolm a clan. Yeah, my mum. Bob Malcolm. Bob Malcolm has Jean that. Malcolm Young. Bob Malcolm is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's close, going it? Her, her, her dad. Imagine having a kill. <laughs> her dad. Not with these bandy legs. Would you go, her pa- dad would you go her pants Malcolm. on or pants off? <laughs> the kilt. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd have to have the uh, pants on out there. It's uh-huh. freezing, isn't it? Yeah, I have the same pants on. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. Scottish chairman, give this man a job. But, well, it's actually the ladies are absolutely perfect because when Ian Holloway, you lit up the world with your Blackpool team. It was it the was lights weren't working in Blackpool before he took over. Mate, that the lights were switched off. They, they never stopped working in Blackpool. Man. That was a know. breath, beautiful, a mm-hmm. fresh air. That the the excitement side when it ruined the place watching it was just they were getting it free. They were getting it free drunk donkey rides when you got the job. That's how excited everyone was on the beach. Yeah, not all of them. No, the eighty six year old man wanted his t- season ticket money back. But when and you got the job? Yeah, and, and he rung him? up and I tried to phone him and I tried rung to Rung you up the club? Yeah, he wanted his money back, so I, the chairman gave him his money back. <laughs> did he? Yeah. And then did you ever hear from him again when she'd been successful? No. Nope. nope. Just shows you that. But were you... It is what it is. Was it true that the, the, the chairman at the time wasn't going to give you the job initially? Wasn't he going to give him an interview? Wasn't he going to give you an interview? No, no. I did he said? Yeah, he, he wasn't going to give me an interview. Yeah, well done. Good research. I asked my agent to get me an interview. Um, he rang him up 
And he said, I heard you don't pay agents. So if you want, if you take my man, I want, you know, a percentage of it. And he went, well, I won't be taking him. So he then rings me and said, look, um, I heard you wanted an interview. I'm sorry, I'm not giving you the job. Good luck to you. I like you, but I'm not paying your agent. Put the phone down. So I'm driving thinking, what? I only asked to get him an interview. What about you? So I rung my agent. I said, what's, what's, what happened? Oh, I'll tell you about it another time. So I went, uh, so I rung Carl Oyster. I said, uh, worry about my agent. Would you give me an interview? He said, yeah, but he's telling me I've got to pay him. I went, I didn't say that, did I? I haven't got your job yet. I want to meet you. I want to talk to you about your job and what I think I could do for you. He said, yeah, well, come up, but you tell your agent I'm never going to pay him nothing. So Did I you finish with your agent? Yeah, in the end, yeah. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, in the end, yeah. He said, if you go there and you fail, you're dead wood. Never what a mistake. Agent, what so. a mistake that was, wasn't it? No, but it's life. It, it, it's life. He, he was a great fella. He had his own opinion. The thing is, I realised I'm work. It's my life. Yeah. And I, I, I worked out what I wanted to do. And I thought that team, if I can get hold of them in that championship, if I can get hold of them, I'm in with a chance of doing well. How was the drive up to Blackpool? Are you constantly just thinking what you're going to say to this guy? I knew exactly what I was going to say. I had it written can down. Can you tell us what it was? No, I, I, I asked him about what I'd read online about the fans hating him. And I had five questions. So when I got Did there... You questions for him? I had questions for him, yeah. Wonder how and I had my suit on, I had my gear on, and I walked in and he had his jeans on. Right? <laughs> so, anyway, I looked at him, because I, I knew the score, and he had a, he had his mate with him, Matt Williams, who's a great friend of mine now. Um, <clears throat> none of them knew me. And I said to him, uh, where's your suit? He went, I wore that yesterday. I interviewed somebody much more important than you. And I went, oh, right. I said, well, I'll take that off then. And I said, I need a coffee, so I'll better get them because I've heard you're tight as a duck's ass. <laughs> so I went to the bar. I brought him a coffee and brought that down, took me tie off, right? And I went, I, and he went, oh, we got some questions for you. I went, no, no, no. You need to answer these first. So I asked him every, every one of the questions. He wasn't ready for them. He That's answered unreal. in the way that I would have asked the person I wanted to work for. Uh -huh. to do it so see if he'd answered them differently would that maybe have changed your mind yeah yeah and Jake you asking him the five questions is what got you the job no I think the way I conducted myself in that um, interview got me the job because he wanted someone who could run the club and he could just talk to him and say no basically yeah. did you tell him that. about you'd been away to Spain and Swansea and stuff like that no he didn't no. care about that he didn't want to know about that so did he, what was, did he just want success? He said, you'll get, as long as we stay up, <laughs> as, long as, as long as we stay up, uh, I don't care what you do, what time you have them in. If you have them in two days a week, I don't really care because I don't like footballers. I don't like agents. I probably won't pay any agents because um, <laughs> wow. he said I can't stand that side of it. And what I don't want to do is my dad losing all his money in this club like he's doing. So I'm going to stop my inheritance going out of here. And that was what he said. So I knew exactly where I stood. If you ask me for something, you've got to prove how bad you want it. And I still might say no. But if you can convince me, then I might say yes. He yeah. said, if you can work closely with this fellow, which was Matt Williams, bloke was brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant, right? And all we used to do was, was Matt would get so pissed off being with him every day, we'd end up having a beer and uh, talking about him and then going back and I'd have a go at him and he'd say, well, I offer nothing to do with you. And... But, you know, because I could, I could unleash on him whatever I wanted. Yeah. So he was a bad cop. I was the good cop, so to speak, because I'd say to the lads, I'm here to focus on football, right? I haven't come here to fail because I failed before. So shut up and do what I tell you, right? And if you want any argument about it, go and speak to Carl. Because he hit players. No, he would tell him exactly what he's told me. So I knew there was no... It was, oh, a, was never going to be any cross no, with the chairman No, there was no crossover yeah, at yeah, all yeah. because if you don't like it, and he was so straight and he was, I was so determined and he was, I was so, I, I had empathy with the players because I understand where they'd been and they hadn't done as well as they wanted to. So I had that um, empathy. He had a loathe for them, but he was stubborn. And I knew he would not ever change. So my emotional empathy side of things 
is my weakness sometimes because I care about them too much. Yeah. His stubbornness was his weakness and also his strength. So between the two of us, Goodness. we had the balance of, I knew he would never do anything that he wouldn't say to me. So happy days. See yeah. how he, he, he said about avoid relegation? Were you in the same mindset as that? That's what you're going into the season to? Or were you thinking no. a lot more? No, I, I believed everything I'd written up would get us playing like the best teams I've seen, Swansea and that. And I really wanted to do it. And I believed in this totally. Didn't know it would work, but I believed that we're going to, the lads will understand what I've said. We'll have some mantras that we say. If we haven't got it, if we lose it within six seconds, we're going to win it back. Right? So would you that's that every bit? time, right? So I, I'm not saying to you we're going to play four four two, four three three, whatever. That is irrelevant. As a, as a as a team, we are going to do this. Yeah. The second we lose it, we don't go back to position. We all try and win it back. Whoever's round there does that, yeah. right? The furthest away, you got to be high enough up that you realise that. Wait a minute. Hang on, are they going to break? Because then we don't want to leave. What? So you've got to drop, drop a little bit, yeah. but the other's got to go. And if we can win that back. That's when I believe the goals will be scored on the second phase, third phase. That's what. So we are going to try and get in one side. If not, we come out and we switch it. So we already know that we've gone that side. They're all going to come over and the space is the other side. So we're going to work it and hit that switch. Don't go square, go long. So it's disguised long ball football, yeah. but we ended up dominating teams because wherever we put it, we already knew and we were going to, outnumber them when we lost the header. Yeah. Bang. So my lads understood it. They took it on. And any time it was going wrong, because we had that mantra, I could change to 3-4-3 three, three and just smack it. Yeah. Because every one of my front lads could win a header. Like Taylor Fletcher. Yeah. Every one of them. Brett could win a header. Yeah, right uh, ben Burgess. I also had wingers who could run like hell who yeah. couldn't win a header. Right. I brought uh, Luke Varney. So it was very, very simple what I told my chief scout I wanted. And Penny brought me people that fitted into it, right? Then he wasn't working for me. He was working for Stoke, but I could still phone him because we weren't on the same level. And if he'd seen anybody, yeah, so I didn't even have a, a chief scout on the payroll. He was just somebody helping you. He was somebody, yeah. So, but oh. Matt Williams was brilliant because he knew all of Scotland. How important was it to, for that player you're playing when you said you went it for their here and the other side? Is you got Charlie? I don't know. Yeah, but Charlie, Charlie, the lads loved him. They borrowed him anyway. But I also had David Vaughan who Good could hit them David with his Vaughan, left yeah. foot. And I said, I don't want to play you left wing. I want to play you in the middle. And Keith Southern, I went... Keith Southern was a dog, mate. Oh, you don't realise how good he you are. He was a dog, wasn't right? he? You don't realise how good you are. And then Ian Everett was a, a right-footed centre. I said, bring on to your right foot in it, that big switch. You ain't got to do left-footed. Was so, Baptiste another one? And Baptiste Quick. was another one. Yeah, Rob Edwards was another one. So, I, listen, I knew what I had there. And we just added to that. Charlie's a big, 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 big Charlie friend of yours. That was. I, I still think to this day that's the the best period of his career. Yeah, nineteen goals from the centre midfield. Wow. Yeah, so how, what, how did you? Do? <laughs> no, he just had a free roll. He could go wherever. So the, that, the whole point was. I mean, we all played four four two, didn't we, for years? Yeah. Right. How boring is that? Four four right? two. Yeah. So at, at Plymouth, I once I switched to a a four three three. Right. We were losing to Cardiff at half time, three nil. Right. 2-0 at half time, they scored, so I changed it, we drew 3 all. But I believed in this other way that we could do that, that I was but I, I didn't totally commit to it. Yeah. So when I had that year out, that was it for me. I gotta do this. Yeah. Right? And I I was so spent so much time writing it down, knowing it, that I could not go off of that. Right? And the lads liked how steadfast steadfast I was in that's what we're going to do. That shape, yeah. See, on Charlie, how quickly did you realise that he was head and shoulders above? Was it first training session or did it take him a while to get going? No. Because it's that... No, I got, I got the that job, That high right? pressing going to get back. It's not really Charlie's sort no, of game. No, I got the job, right? And he'd gone back. He was back at Glasgow Rangers. So they gave me the job and they gave me all the videos of the previous season where they finished 16. So I over uh, crammed it all in over the course of probably half a week. The weekend and half a week, I rang them back and said, you've got to get me Charlie Adam. we got to have him and I want DJ Campbell back. 
because they were the two loanees, right? He's right. And they went, oh, I don't know if we can do that. I said, more than that, I want you to buy me. Buy them a if, Yeah, I want me, you to buy me them because mm. I think we'll really go places with that. So anyway, cut a long story short, um, Matt Williams said they're not going to loan him, but they would sell him. So Valeri Bellacon, actually, I don't understand. How can you want all these people? You've only just got the job. And then I showed him a list of players that I'd worked on and gave Penny the names of the in the way that I was going to play, who way. would fit, fit though. If you can't get him, try him. If you can't get that. So I just went, there's no other choice for Charlie, right? And he would take us to another level because the lads need him. And so when I showed Valeri Bellacon how many sheets I had of who I don't want, he believed that I knew what I was talking about with them. So yeah. he put the money over three days later. Wow. Was it hard to convince somebody like Charlie to sign for Blackpool nope. permanent? No. No. Nope. I, I say because if you if we don't get there playing this way, well, you will shine, right? I said, so if we don't get there, you will, right? I said, what's your frustration? He went, well, I, I, I'm better than... I said, well, I'll help you do that, but shut up, listen to me, and let's have a go then. Another Scotsman under your books, be Barry Bannon. You've got a cracking story about you your jeans. He looks like you can actually be Barry Bannon's dad. <laughs> yeah. hey, you and me, guys, <laughs> He hated me. I brought him on loan from Aston Villa and he couldn't get in the team. And I went, look, Charlie's playing so well. David Vaughan's playing so well. Shut your mouth, get on the bench. <laughs> Shut your mouth, you wee bug. Oh, he, was, he was brilliant, mate. Is it Wembley, he didn't... Player, mate, he was sub. Was he a sub? Wembley. He was sub at Wembley, you know? Do you know what I mean? But what a player. We'll come to Wembley in a bit, but just on the players that we've done, obviously Doby as well. Doby says to ask you, about, did you get given a, did you drive a bit of an orange smart car in Blackpool? Still got it. Have you? Yeah, yeah, we. My, that's my wife's car. Yeah. And they, did you just buy it orange because of Blackpool? Yeah. So you used to scud a bit Blackpool in an orange smart car? Yeah, I used to wear a training kit every day. And I'd have some extra training kit because the training ground was so shit. I'd go back to the main ground, have a shower, and then, but I wanted to represent the club everywhere I was. So that would be done. Only after we got promoted because it cost me a lot of money, but so she I loves did. it. She's still got it now. Wow. And the... They got me keys out of my pocket one day and moved it right next to the skip and that was orange as well. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> what was the thing uh, Charlie was telling you about? Remember the stuff they were doing it in, for Team Spirit and stuff? What was he saying? How was it McDonald's on McDonald's a Friday and stuff like that? <coughs> well, yeah, we, to Charlie about that? Uh, not McDonald's, it was a local calf. If 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 Because you get winds off the sea, like one minute, you literally the goal mouths would blow if you had them on the wheels. I mean, you never heard anything like it. Yeah. How can the wind move a goal mouth? But it was that windy, <laughs> you couldn't do it. So... Those days, end off, book the calf. We used to walk down there, have a breakfast, talk about the game, and away we go. Fly up? Yeah, they could have whatever they want. Wow, oh, unbelievable. Another guy I've heard you speak highly, DJ Campbell. Absolutely. You've got a good story about DJ Campbell, didn't you? No, he's, he's magnificent, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I and was at way? Leicester. Well, I was at Leicester, and he was signed by Martin Allen, and I took Martin Allen's place, so he didn't want to play for me. When I first went there. Why? Right, because he loved Matt Allen? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I respected that. I went, oh, come on. You went, no, no, no. You took his job. I don't like this place. Right? So anyway, wow. he, he goes out on loan to Blackpool. I get a Blackpool job. Um, my assistant manager, Steve Thompson, said, oh, D by the way, DJ was excellent. Now. I said, he probably wouldn't want to come to me, but I'd love to get him. He went, he's good as gold. I got his phone number here. So he rung him. He said, oh, Ollie wants to talk to you. So DJ went, yeah. He said, oh, I play for you now. I love Blackpool. He, was, he said, I just didn't like the fact that they did that to Martin Allen. It wasn't you. I'd love to come. So, oh, my God. We got him up there. And the two of them, him, Charlie's passing and Charlie's vision and the runs that Amazing. DJ would make, I, I, I couldn't teach them anything. It was just, in fact, he didn't want to do what I wanted to do to DJ because he didn't want to get outside the whip for the box. But yeah. all my front lads had to interchange all the time. So, you know. Seeing that in that time you're saying with the team spirit we down to the calf and stuff, is there any other stuff you've done outside the football? Yeah, of course there was. You know, uh, in the Grosvenor um, casino. I, what, a casino? The best casino by the best, the the best, best, best casino in the world. Yeah, totally. no, we had, there's a fantastic one there. Um, and I asked them to, we rented out the, the building right next to them, which was the slide and splash. We've been having a bit of a bad time, so we 
instead of training, they thought they were training. We uh, sent them a message, just bring your shorts. Thought it was a bit weird, but just bring your shorts and a towel. So <laughs> if we go, yeah, we go in there first, <laughs> right? So it's ours. They they gave it to us, and then we go from there. Walk next door, poker competition organized and lunches oh, done. Beautiful. So we had a little trophy. Got Matt Williams to go and get a like card trophy out for the winner. Oh, yeah. So we touch a class that mate, isn't it? Well, I wanted to keep them on their toes, and and if you show your team you believe in them and you relax, you don't always have to play. Mm-hmm. You know, you can improve. you play so much down there as well, Ian, don't you? So yeah. you don't need to turn up. It's my old time. point, isn't it? Yeah. Is if, if you learn from, and we only drew the next game, but it was pressing away. But we played brilliantly. You know, we, yeah. we hit the bar three or four times. The, the, the release of pressure, just by going and doing that, they knew that I trusted them. Is that the best dressing you, you, you had as a manager, the bike pool? Um... It achieved the most that I'd actually put together, Yeah. right? So it's unfair to say that Plymouth was, I think, as good as that. The players, the, what they were believing, the, the fans, what they were doing at the time, we were fourth when I left. If I'd have stayed there, we might have got promoted, I don't know, but I think the, the group was good enough. Um, they they deserved better from me and I shouldn't have left them. Mm. Um, but... The Crystal Palace ones I inherited were brilliant, yeah. absolutely brilliant. Good team. And the connection that they all had was, that's what you need, you know? Yeah. Any team, whether it's the most talented or it's the least talented, you need to have some connection to make sure that when it's going against you, you'll put up some sort of fight. And that's what those lads had totally. Did you um, get away to that trial and it turned up with England kit on? Is that true? No, it is true. Yeah, well done, good, a good lad. Yeah, I didn't know how good he was going to be, but... It, you and know. who was it? So what was the restaurant? And then we went in a restaurant and he was talking to me about how good he was. I said, well, you're good at some of these lads. And I said, how often have you watched this? He said, oh, I watch a lot. And I went, yeah, go on in. They knew. They knew. I said, be nice to him and we'll see. But he wasn't bad, but he wasn't good enough. Do you know what so I mean? So he actually came in and trained? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the truth is, I, sorry, mate, you're having a laugh. <laughs> you, you're slightly wrong about you know, but it, it, you never know. I Nigel Martin came into our training ground with a with a with a Tesco bag with his food oh, condoms. You said no, not <laughs> oh, at all. Sorry, no, he didn't use condoms. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were the worst pair of boots I've ever seen. And uh, he was stacking shelves in in a was in a really? supermarket on my life. So we gave him a trial. We could have said get lost, but we didn't. I our our tea lady went on holiday, saw him play, and said, "Why don't you go up for a try at Bristol Rovers?" So my now, life. I thought you were going to say you gave your tea lady a try. Like, <laughs> no, no, Viaris, <laughs> Viaris, God bless her soul. She said, "Go up to Rovers," and we had a brilliant goalie, Tim Carter, at the time, who was excellent. What do you like right, and uh, he, I swear to you, he went. Jerry Francis went, "Oh my God, who's this?" So, but how did your so tea lady see Nigel Martin play? <laughs> she was down on in Cornwall on holiday, and he played right in goal for his local team, the supermarket bloody team. And she went, God, you're good. Go up for a trial. So he turned up. <laughs> so she's made Nigel Martin. She, she went and played she for has, England. She played for England. This is what I'm saying. So wow. you don't ever judge anyone, do you? Oh, what? That's amazing. Yeah. Hey, I know you said you said calm during the game, but you must have been mental after the game. What were the celebrations like knowing you were going to Wembley with Blackpool? You were tipped for relegation. Oh my God, yeah, that was... Was that asked, a dancing again? Dancing? Yeah, I, I asked, yeah. I, I hate to see it. Charlie Adams dance. I could not imagine he Charlie twerps, dancing. Didn't he twerps, twerps, twerps. He's arsed, didn't he? <laughs> he got, he got, <laughs> he got arsed on him, hasn't he? Why? Does he twerp? You said he twerped. I don't know if he twerps. You know, you know slapping his arse? No, I don't look at his arse. I don't want to know <laughs> that. No, I'd no. never hang around in dressing rooms. No. No, the, the celebration is part of it. There ain't many times in your life you can actually celebrate, so you've got to love it while you can. But yeah. I kept but saying, did you get emotional in? I did when we done it, yeah. For for the people there, yeah, well, and what it means, yeah. I got to be honest, and that semicircle of once we've won against Cardiff, um, I'm up on the and I'm leaning on the and I'm I'm looking at it, a sea of tangerine, and I'm leaning on, thinking, oh my god, that is something else for all those people. What it meant for them, you know, because what it really means is twenty million pound for the local area yeah. of free advertising, right? Because that's what. The Premier League brings you, right? Yeah. So we're at holiday area at Blackpool. What do they need to be 
up front and centre, wasn't it? Wow. Yeah. What about that? Wallop. Here we go. Here we, and most of the time they were saying we were going to be the worst team in the bloody world. What was your team talk before the final? Because I know you like to mix it up. Five million. Was it? Because oh, that's what the boys were getting. That was a bonus, yeah. Them. Is that all you put up? Yeah, just wrote five million. So what's that between them, man? Where did, where did they make? Depends on how many games you played. played uh-huh. So much did Charlie. So make? for for Charlie, Charlie got about fifty quid. <laughs> Char- Charlie, Charlie probably put his wages up by would have worked out nearly five grand a week. Wow! With the three games that he would have played if he played all of them, but you had to earn it. So the chairman didn't mind giving you a bonus if you earn it. So I, I should never forget it. he stood at a in the hotel after we got the trophy and we'd done it. I came down with my wife and Carl's stood there. And he's not even smiling. He's just got his glasses on and he's looking at me and he's just gone, can't believe it, you did it. I went, I didn't do anything, mate. He said, you, you did. I didn't want to get relegated. And you kept saying, promotion, promotion. We're going to promote the Premier League. He said, fuck me, we, we're there. What are we going to do now? I said, I don't know, but it's great, isn't it? Amazing. See when you when you originally went in for the meeting, when you were uh, the job interview, did you see you were going to get promoted? No, I said we're going to try and play a, a Premier League way. He said I don't care what you do, I'm not yeah. interested. Just don't get me relegated. So I w- I didn't have to talk about it. Most of the time they they, they want to know how you were going to play, right? So he didn't care. I went okay, but I told everyone else we're going to try and play a way to. Uh, is an attacking minded with an attack mindset. Yeah. Is, that, is that your greatest moment in football? Um, Including playing? No, I think the greatest moment was being Bristol Rovers manager. The first time I got it as a player manager, first time I put a Bristol Rovers shirt on was another milestone. You, 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 what comes first, doing it or believing you could do it? Believing you could do it has to come first. But yeah. then once you do it, that's it, isn't it? You've, you've actually, shit, it's there. I've done it. So... And I know how hard it is. So I, I, I have, I got me. I have such a wonderful life. I can't. I hope you get that from what oh, I'm saying course, because uh-huh. you, to have ticked off so many things. I just think I was lucky because my boy never knew what he wanted to do. I was going to support him when he was ready, but he, oh, I don't know, you know. And so now he's a tattooist. The minute he wanted to do the tattooing, he changed. But so I he knew found his passion. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's a tattoo artist. I knew from ever since I can remember, I want to play football. I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do it. And so I managed to be an editor the game, focused. Yeah, he did that. Did he do that? Oh, look at that. That's amazing. When did you get that done? Uh, about two years ago now. Is that Frank, Frank Bruno? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's brilliant. Iconic moment. That's one of me. He was, how can he talk the talk he did? And then produce. Amazing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know. He's the opposite to what I'd ever believe in mentally, but oh my God. Ultimate sportsman, isn't he? The ultimate, yeah. Personality and everything, yeah. See, just on the team talks, like, because I've heard the boys that you've played with say your team talks could be completely random. random. How, how do you come up with it? I it just stay in the game. No, I get, I've got to be honest. I, I, on all the courses I've ever done, they, they tell me you butterfly. Right, so I'll be like, I'll land there and then I'll go there and then, I, and then I don't round it up. But I don't really care. I go with what I feel about and I might be passionate about something. I might have seen someone on the telly that I can't stand, you know. Fucking Love Island. How dare you be that false and bullshit well, and yeah. lie and talk about he people. He watches it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love and, it, and it's popular, but I can't stand <laughs> it. Does my head in. You know what I mean? How can you be so goddamn God, bloody God plastic? Yeah. You know I'm what I mean? Up, Don't make sense. Just, it, the, the night actually you won, what was the celebration? It was like wild. Um, you and Charlie, were you sliding a bit? No. We, no. Listen, I, I had probably a few too many than I normally would, but and I know the best thing was the, the tri- trip uh, back to the hotel because we'd always obviously booked a hotel and I said, we ain't, we ain't bringing any champagne or nothing because that's bad luck. You don't get arrogant. You've got to do the thing first. So the second we won, I ordered us to get some champagne brought to the coach. So we waited. And on the coach, my family came on. A lot of other people's family came on. We were all stood there. And by the end of it, the coach could already move. Right? And we had beers and we had, I don't know where it all came from, mm-hmm. but someone told me they had some underneath. But I'm saying it was the best journey I'd ever, ever seen. 
What were you up in the back of the boys or were you doing with no, the family? No, I was down in the front oh. with my family and like Steve Thompson and his family and and on on my life, Phil Orner, the, the, the physio, it was unreal. And they still, the lads have still got a, a WhatsApp group now and they keep putting some of the photos that I haven't seen on there with them all having a cigar yeah. on there and all of this. And it was quite, quite surreal, really, you know, for for where the club was and what they'd all actually done and for where they'd been. And in that one season, uh, we weren't fancied to, yeah, we nicked in the playoffs. We weren't fancied to do anything, mm. even in that. But for some reason, I've been saying it the whole time and they did it. Yeah. So and then, it's, then it's your level, Premier League level. Premier League. Now, Blackpool's budget compared to the rest must have been nothing really, was well, it? No, the, the fact of there, there are some facts. No one got promoted <coughs> before us less than 16 million for one year. Right. With the bonus of 5 million, our budget was 10. Wow. So we were six under the normal wow. budget and that was only a bonus. So we were one third oh, of what you, you normally... What do you think at that moment then? How do you do you, think you do you think you've got no chance? Like, you know, you can't no, think like that. No, but. no, because I, uh, I got them to double their wages. Every one of them. Oh, shit. That was the idea. We had a big meeting and he didn't want to do it. I said, no, but you can't... If he's got that double written in, every one of them did it. To get it yeah. I want to give every one of them a chance. So you got to double them all. I was... So he did, and then he kept throwing that back at me in the end. That ain't right. That was your fault. That ain't right. You shouldn't have talked me into that. But I said, I can't manage them. That ain't right. Yeah. You know, because socially, I believe every one of us, whether we played or whether we didn't, was a part of it, yeah. you know? You're a socialist. I like so it. there we go. Did you change your approach to training, or did you? was everything no. exactly the same? No. We're going to play that... the same way. We're not going to oh, yeah. go defensive. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because that's what you're believing. How, how could I coach them like that to make them be like change, that? And yeah. then, but do you not think, though, that, and this isn't even my opinion, but do you think some people would maybe then say that you do need to change when you play a, at a better level? A better or a bigger team, or, or maybe no, I don't know. No, no, they could say what they like, but you cannot. That's him that was actually saying it, he no, just no, hiding behind cannot, the computer. No, no, no. You cannot commit to something as totally as I did to get them there and then say it's wrong because yeah. you ain't good enough, right? What I should have done was changed one tactic at the end, right? That I realised after. What was that? When I watched it back, there was one fundamental thing I should have done with my opposite fullback every time we attacked. Because we went and attacked Liverpool away. We went and attacked Man United away, right? We went and attacked Chelsea away, which is a terrible mistake. They beat us 4 0 in the first half. Second half, we played exactly the same. Right? And we drew nil-nil. So I said to the lads after, we, we drew the second half, lads. You might have lost the first, but we drew. So there's nothing wrong with us, right? Anytime I made a, a decision that was a defensive-minded one to protect something, it all went wrong. Wrong, oh, right? Yeah. Everton away, we're free one up. I take off DJ Campbell, right? Uh. We lose 5-3. Because my lads needed me that, to believe. Oh, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. But there was one tactic that... I should have changed. And if I'd ever had that lot again, instead of both my fullbacks staying out there, right, we're attacking down that side, I'm he should coming. have come in. Yeah. I'd still want him forward, he should have come in. So I'd have kept one midfield player there, two centre half, so we'd have a box. But a box how people do Yeah, that, I it, kept yeah. him too wide. We got done time and time again that. in that area there. And I never looked at it. I was too stubborn to say, you got to do something different. Hey, you've learned now, But it? you cannot change all your ethos that the lads believed in and then look like a different asshole. Mm -hmm. You can. Yeah. Uh, how did you manage to convince Charlie to stay? There's so many teams in for him, aren't there? I didn't. That's, that was the start of the rot because I promised him, he had something written in his contract, if we're in the top six and one of them came in for him, we'd automatically let him, cool. providing the money was right, we'd automatically let him talk to him. Right? So Liverpool came in, they were seventh. And obviously it's Liverpool. Yeah. So he came in with his agent to Carl's office and I said, they want to see you. He went, I don't want to see any of them. It's nothing to do with them or you or even you. He said, I can sell and buy whoever I want at whatever time, right? And he's not going. I said, you gave a word that it, he said, they're seventh. Have a look at the fucking table. That's his words. I told you top six, they're seventh. So get out my and office. Would you have told them just to let, would you have told, I, said, I, I, I would have sold Charlie then. I said, 
It's Liverpool. And you don't want a player that doesn't want to be there, do you? No, that's my old point. But he didn't want to do what I wanted to do with the money. Yeah. I said, look, it's six, six million they offered. Six million. What can I do with six million? I want to do this. Um, we lose our best player, right? And I'm going to get four players. Two of them were already with us on loan. Make them permanent, right? That will cost you this. So I'd done a little plan. Yeah. And I think I asked for too much. If I'd have only asked for two of those things, I might have gotten. Right. Mm. But I'm saying, Carl was that stubborn. Charlie came in his office with his agent, Carl wasn't having it. So by the end of the season, Charlie still went to Liverpool. We got relegated. Yeah. Second half of the season, right? We got 11 points. Up to the first half of the season, we got 28. So wow. how motivated was Charlie? Oof. So yeah. there was a massive argument. Why did he not see that? Oyster? There was a Why massive I get a picture? argument. We had a meet the fans thing at the end of the season, like we always did. And my lads went, we're all going in the boardroom. They, it all kicked off with between them and Charlie. What, the players? Saying, and yeah, saying he Charlie was selfish Adam. and you didn't try and you didn't do this. And he went, the club should have let me go. And I went, I tried to. and But, but basically, I didn't keep up my word then. Did I? Because I should have insisted he'd go. Oh, yeah. But it's not really much. If the chairman is not what can you allowing do? it, then it's not much you can do, can it? Yeah, but that, that was the start of it, wasn't it? He, he, he let me do what I he up said. Up until he then, went, yeah. Up until then, you know? Mm, and then Sir Alex came out in the media, didn't he? And he was, was he playing mind games, you think, to get the price up, Si? Because I think you were saying well, that. What's the one that more? <laughs> no, he I, 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 I actually him. rang Harry, who was at Tottenham, and said, because they were in the top six at the time. I said, this kid... Not not because I wanted... I wanted my word to stand. Yeah. That's the first time he... I made him change the training ground because it wasn't good enough, right? So he had to go and rent somewhere else because I made him walk on it. The grass was terrible. The lads wouldn't believe I could do that. But I went, that ain't good enough. How can I ask you to play football when you run around? I, I wouldn't run a bloody donkey on that, let alone a racehorse. And you're my resources, so let's get the mentality of we want better. And whatever we got, I'm going to try and guarantee you that I'll get you better than it is at the minute. Because every one of us footballers wanted to be part of something that was getting better, not getting worse. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, of course that is. Yeah? Yeah. So unfortunately, when I couldn't produce for Charlie, when Liverpool wanted him, that was a major thwack. Mm. Right? Honestly, that yeah. was. Uh, how did, obviously you spoke about the fullbacks coming in the wee bit you've learned for the Premier League but how was that missing out survival last final day tough to take man. well we only we only dropped it with three games to go we ended up in the bottom three Wigan made an unbelievable recovery and what have you but we we were away to Tottenham our last three games was um, we had somebody at home we beat 3-1 which was we needed to win um, can't remember who that was the last two games was Tottenham away and Man United away. Wow. So at Tottenham away, we were 2-1 up in the 95th minute. Jermaine Defoe scored from 25 yards. Oh. Right? And honestly, to this day, I watched that back and I had it on slow motion and his shot, I still couldn't see it on slow motion. He hit it that hard. Quite, yeah. Right? And then Man United, we missed a sitter in the first minute. Keith Suffern comes off his heel. Um, DJ and Charlie create one. And we go 2-1 up with 20 minutes to go away at Man United. And we lose 4-2. Four, four oh. Yeah, he brings on Michael Owen, who gets oh. a hat trick. <laughs> wow, well, bad play to bring on. How was your dressing room after that? Absolutely devastated, yeah. Slow dancing then? No dancing. <laughs> no dancing. Slow dancing. No dancing. No dancing at all, mate. There's a couple of players we were talking about earlier. What was Barry Ferguson, John Joe Shelby like? Love Shelby as a player. Technique's brilliant, oh. man. Do you think he could have done, should have done better, maybe? I probably could play at top level now with the ability he's got. Whatever we're saying, the locality <laughs> of the locality of Blackpool. Who did I have on my doorstep? That's why I wanted that job like you wouldn't believe. How many Premier League clubs did, was in around that area who I could loan from? Yeah. Right? You got Liverpool, oh, man, you got right. Everton, Sorry. you got Man City, Man United. And what I had to do was try and say, hang on, come on, I can help some of your young ones, you know? And not being funny, 
John Joe Shelby just walked in, scored four, beat Bristol City f- five nil, and he scored four. He's taking. Do you know what I mean? Fella. I borrowed. I mean, Aston Villa, Birmingham ain't that far away, but th- they trusted me with, you know, because Gary Penroy's took. We took Sylvan <coughs> Ebanks Blake from Man United down to Plymouth, and he started scoring a load of goals. So it was all. It was all part of it. Do you know what I mean? But I, I got to be honest. John Joe walking in there, he was just full of frustration. Because he got bought for seven million when he was seventeen, and yeah. he was frustrated. So I said, "Look, just shut up, come play with Arla." And what we're going to try and do is pass a move and make sure you, if you lose it, try and get it back with us. It was a joy to have him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As he taught play, some of the things he could do is again. It, I can't say who's best and who's not because best at what you know, mm. best at what Tom Ince came out of nowhere from from Liverpool. Yeah youth team and he was unbelievable playing our way you know Matt Phillips come from Wickham absolutely unreal the best I, I got to say was you know you've mentioned a couple who were brilliant but Seamus Coleman came oh, on loan oh what a player Seamus, Seamus Coleman, Coleman watches this as well came, on loan, came on loan from Everton went straight in and woof we'd have never done it without him I lost Neil Erdy he was magnificent for us but the transfer window wasn't in then so I had Three more days before I could borrow someone else. Right now, you, that happens. You've lost it. We wouldn't have done it. Yeah. What a bit funniest player you've had? Has there been a uh, Luke, Luke Varney, without a shadow of a doubt, man. You know, I, I had a couple of nuggets who I used to moan about <laughs> in a nice way at, at Millwall. Um, S- Scott Malone and uh, Beavers. I, I couldn't stop them practical joking on each other and everybody else. And it used to do my head in because... I said, if you concentrate in training and listen to what I'm doing, I got no problem. They were about the whole time. Yeah. You know, luckily, they both gone on and done really, really well. But I swear to you, it was too childish. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to get the balance right. But Luke Varney came in to us and um, straight away he's Reg, isn't he? Reg Varney, you know, straight away. <laughs> and he la- laughed it. But he was so good <laughs> at, what he, at what he does. Um, and the way that we played, it was like he... He was made for us, you know? We played crew in a, in a pre-season friendly and uh, Dario Grady said to me, I can't understand you're playing this way, how you ain't taking Luke Varney. Here's his number, he's free agent. I went, is he that? He went, yeah, he's that good. And he'll thrive playing that way. So anyway, we brought him on um, um, me. Absolutely unreal as a bloke. Has he had what way? Yeah, no, if, if, we're, if we're doing a warm up, and I used to leave that to Steve Thompson. I'd be putting me stuff out and thinking, and I could hear him just laughing. And he'd be saying something, doing something, and pretending to fart, and <laughs> and then trip someone up. You know, you jog backwards, so he'd be straight down behind yeah, someone, so you fall over, and then he'd like dive on you on the bed. and then they'd be like uh, last one off the ground. And he'd be on someone's shoulders. What are you doing, Luke? He's just a nutter. He yeah. liked to laugh. Do you know what I mean? But as a fella, whether I picked him, whether I didn't, he still had that. So he added to everything yeah. that we did. Do you, do you get what I mean? Yeah, some of, of them, someone will moan. You know, I used to have to pick up Wee Man, Barry Bannon, because if you don't cheer up in a minute, Billy Clark was another one with me. I said, Bill, I said, I'm picking the team because they played well. And if you're almost as good as them in a minute, yeah, but you ain't giving me a chance. I said, well, why do I want to give you a chance if they're still doing that? <laughs> you're helping me by being that good and they're worried about their place. So yeah, you're just pushing them on yet. Stop fucking moaning at me. I'll knock you out. <laughs> they used to call him Wild Bill. I played yeah. against Billy Clark, good player, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. he's just retired at the minute, so fair play to yeah. him. Yeah. And then Blackpool comes to an end, mate. Love affair comes to an end. I know, that was really heartbreak when I remember you uh, falling really tired. Really tired. Up, you were in tears when you left Blackpool. And the Premier League, I think, the whole world, and, uh, but then on to Crystal Palace, mate. Yeah, that was Dougie's loss time, in my game, wasn't it? I mean, why, why he chose to go to Bolton at that time, I really don't know, but what can you do? You don't normally pick up a team who's top of the league, do you? I nearly oh. ruined it, but we managed to get there in the end. <laughs> How did you leave at Boyston? Um, basically, it was it was to do with my contract, right? I had a I had a one year rolling contract that I could only be sold out of or sacked. So because we did that, he didn't want to sack me. So he was only ever going to sell me, wasn't he? But I realised I was totally his property. Yeah, because I couldn't get out. There was the time wasn't ticking down. It was a onward every year. It just rolled revolved. revolved so. Uh-huh. I was stuck, wasn't I? God. So he then probably didn't want to pay me what was on the thing, you know, 
Um, cause my pay never went, unless we got relegated, my pay didn't go down. So the agent I had at the time, which wasn't the same one as I did when I got the, he said, oh, I can't get you any better than that. That's fantastic. Right. But what he didn't say was that you're his property as well, uh -huh. by the way. So I had to get someone to buy me out of there, didn't I? Otherwise I'm probably Stop still being Stop and, sat on the pips No, and but he, he, he said, I got this great idea. I'm going to take all those lads that you have doubled and what they're going to go back to less than they were on before you started. Ugh. What do you think of that? I went, my can't work for you like that. He said, well, you got to because your contract tells you you got to. So, so it broke down a little bit, yeah. but you know, at the end of the day, I still thank him for what he did. Without him, I couldn't have done any of it. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, because he let you have a free reign. No free well, reign, but no, like, he, you know, he, he did it the way you wanted it. He, he, we had a skeleton squad and it worked a treat. Yeah. Sometimes too many people get in the way, don't they? Yeah. But then say another big one, Steve Parrish. Stevie Parrish, yeah. Was she a big personality? He, he goes, Massive. He, he goes, it was Susanna Rideoff. Good, good morning, Britain. He did? No, no they're over now. Oh, no, no. oh yeah, sure. They, they, you're off the chart, aren't oh, you? Sorry, mate. I'm not she's up on the gossip, but yeah. She's beautiful. Huh? Do you know why she left Steve Parrish? He's been, he's been texting her. Who you have? We didn't know what to tell, but we're going to say. How was he? What limit was he? Hard work, good guy. No, he, listen, I, I thank him for giving me the opportunity, you know, and, and what I picked up there was something that was like, I'd never seen it. It was totally regimental. They were so well organised. As you can tell with me, I'm a little bit off the cuff sometimes, providing I do what I want and play the way that I want. He asked me to change the way they were playing because um, he believed they could have more of the ball and be even more successful than they were being under Dougie and try and win. I like the fact that you try and win. So, Surely. But in the end of it, he had a go at me because we started losing. You know what I mean? And we'd be up now if the, if Dougie was still here. And Oh, my God. Oh, did you see that to you? Oh, yeah. Oh. I said, why did he leave you then? <laughs> Stop talking about your ex-bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your new bird, mate. Hey? You've got a new bird. Yeah. That's right now. No, seriously. <laughs> oh, it ain't my fault he left you. What's going on? <laughs> did you know bring a hypnotist at Palace against Stephen Doby? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get there. I didn't think they were confident enough in doing maybe new things, but they didn't want to because they were good at what they were doing. Yeah. You know, because they believed that I don't want to see my team, when we lose it, they just jog back. I want to win it up there, but yeah. oh, no, no. When they when they did get it right, and I encouraged that in the end, I had to go back to what they were doing. It was a joy to watch. Yeah. It's very yeah. hard taking over a successful team, I always think, because it's so hard to convince them to change, isn't it? Well, they took a while to get that good as well, you know? Yeah. And what they did have, they had a perfect balance of how to do it and when they were doing it. Um, the counter-attacking was quite sensational. The first game I watched of them, they beat Mick McCarthy's new Ipswich team 5-0, but they had 58% possession. Yeah. So how could, Mick said to me after, I can't believe it, we, we lost 5-0 and you only had... We controlled the game. I yeah, think. but he said the counter-attacking, because Glenn Murray was brilliant, Wilford one side, Balassi the other, and we had a, a number 10 who could be attacking or defensive in... Um, Owen Garvin or Owen Garvin, I remember him. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was the defensive Irish player, one, huh? but he had a wonderful left yeah, peg Yeah, he on. did. Pat and um, Andre oh. Townsend, though. No, no. Mares, Mar Andre Mares. Right, I can't remember. Mate, do you so I bring him on to go more attacking and not being funny. <laughs> it worked. So yeah. the minute I was going away from that, trying to play the way I did. Um, they weren't quite happy. We started losing and I had to go back to them. But I realised, again, it ain't about me. It's about getting this lot happy in what they're doing. It's a high oh. How oh, is he still at, how is he still at Palace? Mate, what a player he is. He's brilliant, isn't he? Well, timing was unlucky for him, you know, because Sir, I think Sir Alec would have made him... Yeah, yeah. top. Yeah, he, he, he could be anything he wants. Could he do things in training where you genuinely were? I've never seen anything quite like it. Is it is his step over and how far he moved it and how quick he was off that mark? I've never seen anything like that. You know, I, I had some great wingers up until then. I didn't believe he was going to be that good. They had a song, "He's Just Too Good for You." The Palace fans and yeah. you know, before the first game, I stayed at one of the the owners' houses and his young son said, "Have you seen Wilf?" I went, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's so brilliant." And the following game, I, I saw it. It's like, oh my god. How good are you? Yeah. And what a wonderful kid as well. Is he a good, I was just going to see what kind of guy Magnificent. is he? Magnificent. In what way? Just so he's just 
pleasant. What, what you see, he's so nice and pleasant, and there ain't one warped and twisted thing about him. He just wants the ball, give me the ball, I want to play. Yeah. And he can't understand how other people are kicking him. And I'm trying to say, they ain't going to like you, you're too good. Yeah. He can't understand that. Right. Beautiful. What a wonderful fella. And he was in a documentary, Paul. That's I see, just being taught that as well. I know, no, I'd be above watching that, but when we were doing that, it's one of the ones where I, it's hard, and I don't see how I'm like, I see Mourinho obviously doing it and stuff as well. It must be difficult. Uh, the, manager, the manager agree to that, or he just told that you, you've got to do it, the, the documentary. Which documentary? Which one? Was it when he goes, where he goes there? I knew nothing about that one, yeah. Were you in it? <laughs> I, was in it. I was in it. But I knew, I knew nothing about it. I, Steve Paris did an impersonation of me. I, I, I want to knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you think that's right? He, so no. I mean, no, hang on a minute. Dougie, yeah. Dougie's Scottish. He don't, and, and Dougie said, he, 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 you. He's done it about my accent. I think that's just bang out of order. Uh, bang out of order. Well, when did he do that? In the documentary he does it? Yeah. Yeah, watch it. Did you pull him? I haven't spoke to him yet. Hopefully he watches this. Uh -huh. It's a crock of shit, that, isn't it? So wait, when did you, when did, see, when you took the job, did, did they say you were going to do a documentary? No. They've done that after. They asked me after I left, would you, yes, yeah, so I went in and seen, I, I thought I was brutally honest about it all. Um, and I don't expect the chairman who I helped get up because his other bloke had left him, right? I don't expect him to do an impersonation of my accent. Do you? Not no. really? I don't think that's no, right. No, I don't. That just as though I'm happy you took his burden. <laughs> No, 100%. Mm -hmm. right. Have you taken it for real? No. Nah. Going going that's why he's doing That's why we're at, That's the okay. real reason we're in London, Ian, but we didn't want to see on camera. Is that right? why you got that top on? You don't like that. <laughs> it's her top, isn't it? It's her top. <laughs> Hopefully she's well, not watching it. <laughs> but, mate, again, look, another, another promotion in the Premier League. Guy's a genius, some may say. Another one. You're loving that water, aren't you? I can't help it, yeah. <laughs> so, wait, how much do you take for take part in that palace getting promoted? Obviously, you, came, you said you came in. No, I, I, can't, I can't really. But you could have, because if you kept sticking no. to what you were doing, they would have kept losing, but you said you changed something and let them go back to... So again, that's a sign of a good manager. It was something that I had to do, and I realised that. that I realised that this lot want to play that way, um, and that's fine. There's different ways. Thank God there's different ways to play football. For me, everybody's trying to play like Man City at the minute, mm. and it's nowhere near as good as Man City do it. So, you know, what you're even trying... What you have to do is is have a little bit of variety and change and and however being part of the Wimbledon thing back then, it changed the game a little bit because you still uh, there's some cur values that in football winning a header in the opposition's box and in your box is absolutely vital. We should yeah. never lose that. It's absolutely vital that you've got to be able to do that. That don't make the game boring. It, it's a hell of a skill. So you know maybe you shouldn't practice it so much and because of the, the damage it might do to your brain. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm saying the game, if everybody does it the same way, it's not watchable, is it? No. Nah. The beautiful thing about it is like a game of chess on the grass and and you never know where that ball's going to go. You might try and control it, but wow. Because it's like fascinating when you watch a man sit who want to dominate the ball against like a Simeone Atletico Madrid who are defensive and seeing how Beautiful. They, yeah. Because some, some defensive football, some of the ways that, you know, Italy did it in the Euros. I shouldn't mention it, but you'll probably be happy we lost. What a <laughs> thing. <laughs> All I'm saying, the see, way see, they see. defended was just, it's a joy to watch as a coach. Yeah. It was a joy to watch. The discipline it takes for, there's no gaps between oh, their lines. Nah, nah. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Did and how well, how well Scotland played against us that day. Oh, yeah, well, oh, well, 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 they let you down on the yeah. other ones, though, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> didn't it work out for you the next season at Palace? How would you think that was, didn't it? Parrish getting involved? No. Not. Listen, I can't fault Steve Parrish in any way, shape or form, right? But what I am asked to do, I need to try and do. I can't change. So having to go back on it and, you know, some of the things that he said that, oh, we'd have been up by now if Dougie had stayed. I said, well, how do you know that? You lost the first three games of the season. I won them at Blackpool. How do you know I won them? They've already got you up. So mm. don't talk shite. Because it is, isn't it? Yeah. If, isn't it? You know, if. If I was six foot four, would I be even better? No, no. You know, if I had a better face, could I be an actor? Who knows? I, if is the biggest word in the yeah. fucking dictionary, isn't it? It's bullshit. So anyway, all I've said, he, he brought me in to change the style. So that, how many other people has he brought in after me to try and change the style? They couldn't do it either. Mm. Frank De Burr. 
Lost seven games, didn't he? Yeah. I had actually won one and drew one out of my first eight. And I was still dealing with a transfer market. I didn't have a chief scout in because Dougie took him. So I think I did all right. And so did they come to you in and say, listen, time's up? No, Steve and I were having a chat. I said, I need a, I'm fucking hanging. I'm knackered. I'm, you know, but I need, I don't, I can't guarantee I'll keep you up, but I'm still ready to do this and blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm not happy about that one person. He brought a player that I didn't even know was coming. Oh, How can that work? Yeah, that's not, that's the beginning of the end, isn't it? So what's next for Ian Holloway is the question we all want to know, isn't it? Um, back in, he needs to get back in after this chat. I think Scotland's calling. I think it's time for him to come, back, come and meet his hey, clan. What, what about Stevie Clark then, eh? What job he's done for you, boys? Uh, no, uh, listen, he, he is doing great, but I think we, we're now the, the players Scotland's got. Listen, I think we need maybe a wee bit more on the front foot. And it's no... It's easy you need to Ian Holloway's style of play. You, can the ball. you and him working together. Or I still think he's in the Scottish League now. I really do. I think it's time your clan's calling you to come back. I think because your clan's are slaughtered. Maybe. <laughs> what about... I want to tell you, just on the Van Gaal Van Gaal. <laughs> See, on the Van Gaal thing with journalists, how, how did you get on with journalists during your managerial time? You got. I got to take you right back to Bristol Rovers player manager, right? Um, the most confusing thing of all. I got player, to, player of the match, man of the match, and we lost two one in a FA Cup game that my board told me wow to win, right? So I'm going into a meeting with the press and they're saying, "Oh, you lost. How bad's that? It's terrible. You've lost it." And I went, "You're not going to talk about the game, and I might have played all right. You know, you're just going to ask me about what went wrong." Yeah. So I got aggressive. I was too aggressive with them. So when I went out to QPR after that, I thought I can't carry on like that because you need the press on your side. You do. Yeah. It'll get, it makes it a lot easier if, if the fan, they write some nice things about you. So I tried to give them a bit of my humour. And I think Gordon Strachan, as you, you pay me the biggest compliment I've ever had. There you go, mate. You're English Gordon Strachan. I'd love to be half as good as that man. I think he's absolutely outstanding. Yeah. But you've got to embrace it. And I believe you need to be resilient. The biggest thing I want to get over to anybody out there, right? However you are, whatever's happening to you, somebody deals you some shite and you've got to deal with it, right? And ain't no good moaning and whinging. You've got to take it on the chin and get on with it, you know? And that's what I'm looking for. People who get a re give me a positive response to a negative event. Because at least you've got a chance of turning that negative into a positive. Yeah. And I can't stand people, Ooh. even if they were good, Ooh, give me the ball. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's two negatives in a row, isn't it? You've lost the ball, he didn't give it to you, and you're no one's chasing. Yeah, yeah. So give me a positive re response yeah. all the time. And that, that's what I'd give you, no matter what. That's what I tried to give Palace. I tried to put them in a better place. Whether you liked me, whether I was Dougie, whether I did something different, I was asked to do certain things. I couldn't promise I would get you up or keep you up. That was never in it. You gave me that job and you didn't give me the amount of years that you did so to you. Yeah. Passion's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he could talk all day, which is good as well. Been a superstar, isn't it? Somebody told me that your meetings were so long that your goalie coach used to fall asleep in them. George Woods, is that no, true? Not all of them, no. George George used to leave about six in the morning and, and I told him, you don't have to be in my meetings, George. It's not my fault, but he come from a farming family, mate. What a wonderful man. Great right? guy, and George I'm telling you, he had... He was up wiping cows' asses about three in the morning. <laughs> so know, but that was for enjoyment. That was what I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he never even washed his hands before he ate his fucking sandwich. That's how bad he was. Hey? What a guy thought I you didn't even, he came in once him. without his gloves on. I didn't recognise him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, it was a weird one. And I'll, I'll tell you this to your face. When you took the Millwall job, I thought, nah, it's not. It's not Ian, Hol Ian Holloway Club. For the style of play that they have... Mate, notorious I, for but you want to play possession. I, I, ne I needed a, a a break, and the chairman was excellent man. Kenny Jacket knew him really well. Kenny had told him about me, so I said no three times. Is yeah. Why? Because I didn't feel it was right, and in the end, I took it. Um, mm. And I wish I hadn't, but I thought passion was. 99% of the club, the 1% I didn't like was, it didn't matter. That was still had my name on it. I don't think anyone should be violent about the word of football. Yeah. You know, if we went in for a tackle, I would want to win it. And I know you would. That's about as tough as it gets. The rest of it is a load of crap. Football's much better than that. So, mm. you know, when we lost to Rotherham away, 
and the bad crowd went. Um, a Rotherham fan shouted at me, oh, all the way, all the way, that, that's got your name on it, mate. You work for them, so you must agree with it. Oh. Did that get to you, huh? Yeah, it did, yeah. Yeah. I think my grandchildren, <laughs> great-grandchildren, should be able to go to a game without being threatened mm. in any way, shape or form. You know, if anybody wants to do that, I don't agree with you, you yeah. know? Well, he's not just doing here to speak to Suzanne Reed, he's also doing here to meet the... He's going to go and batter them all well, casuals for you, so there you go. Yeah. How are you? Just myself, hi. Yeah, on your own, yeah? Just myself, All the best, kid. <laughs> hi. No worries. <laughs> Hang them on. I cut that in case you hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Elton Morrison, before we go, because he's back with Arby, obviously. He's a much-talked-about figure in football. What's he, what's he like? He's had it really tough, right? How tough can you get? How much tougher can you get it than Sir Alec Ferguson actually saying, I think he could be the best Man United player we've ever produced? Talk about, I don't think Sir Alec meant that. You know, see that about Phil Jones as well, don't they? About the best <laughs> signing, so. Yeah, yeah, it is tough. Yeah. It is tough. But again, life's about being resilient, you know, and him and Pogba were at the same club and Pogba was told to go by Sir Alec. Don't like your attitude, you're not bigger than us, but they brought him back after. So, you know, life's about learning, isn't it? And yeah. I, 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 what I saw in that boy was pure genius. Has he? And I wanted to try and get it out of him. Yeah, the way he lends it and gets it and b- bounces it and gives it and passes him. And it, it was all too much. Could he live up to? And that's the whole, you've got to be really, really careful, you know? Yeah. And I, I've got a quick story for you. Steve McManaman, absolute wonderful bloke, right? He leaves Liverpool and goes on a free transfer. For should have been 11 million, but he goes to Real Madrid. I bumped into him years later and said, how are you, son? And he went, oh. He said, I found it really difficult because I scored probably the best goal I've ever scored in my life against Celtic. You'll probably remember it. He ran, right? Every time I got the ball, Liverpool fans had seen me do that, wanted me to do it. And I didn't know when to pass it, when not to. So I put pressure on myself by scoring that wonderful goal. Oh, wow. And I, seriously, we don't understand yeah, how yeah. tough it is, do we? If we look at it a minute, at Ram, Rana Kanu, who's just won that tennis, how amazing is that? At Wimbledon, she choked up, couldn't play. Yeah. The job they've done from then until now, and then she's walked out there and won her first tournament, her second time she's ever played. Well done to her. But what people don't realise, the mental resilience that she needs and the practice she must have done to get her that good at that age is quite phenomenal. So all I know, I'm looking at myself as honestly as I can. I don't like mirrors because me, I'm an ugly <laughs> bastard. I, don't, I couldn't have done any more for anybody if they'd have asked me to or tr- I tried. And I'm sorry if it didn't go well at your club. I didn't mean it. I tried as hard as I could to be who I'm authentically am and what you see is what you get now you either like it or love it I don't really give a shit because I can't change and I'm never going to you know it's been wonderful meeting you two fecking Herberts God <laughs> knows what London's going to be like after you fecking left eh coming down here with a colourless neck and all that look at him could have started a whole new trend <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Ian Holly. what, what a guy. guy what a hero <laughs>